Hi boys and girls. Today we are going to continue our work with money by looking at word problems that involve spending money. Okay, the best part about money. Uh, what we're going to learn to do today is how to understand word problems and figure out if we are using addition or subtraction to solve the problem. And we're going to have some new vocabulary today. So in our problem, uh, Adam purchases a bag of chips that costs $2.60. He pays with a $5 bill. How much change will he get back? So we have a couple of new words here that we, we desperately need to understand in order to do, to do our work. So this word here, purchases. Purchases means to buy. Uh, Adam is going to give away $2.60 or trade it so that he can get a bag of chips. He doesn't have exactly $2.65, so he is paying with his $5 bill. All right, so we know that these are very important numbers. How much change will he get back? Change is the word we use for what's left over. How much will he get back is how much is left that belongs to Adam after he spends $2.60. So we can look at these numbers. We have the cost and we have how much he has and the number change, okay? So how much you have, in this case, Adam has $5. How much does it cost? Adam's bag costs $2.60. How much you get back? Well, this is the mystery number. This is the number that we are going to be finding out today. Uh, the first strategy we're going to use is a number line, which we have used throughout the year. Uh, in, in the number line, we usually have a starting point and an end point, and that is what we're going to find out. So our starting point is $2.60, okay? This is the money that Adam is going to give up, and from $2.60 all the way to $5.00, is Adam's change. That's what he deserves back. Okay, so again, number lines are so important. We can use them in so many different ways. And it's uh, in this problem here, it's a good example of why it's a valuable tool to, to continue to practice with. So if I'm at $2.60, I can count by tens, $2.70. $2.80, $2.90, $3. So I'm going to come down here at $3. Okay. And how many cents was that jump again? So that was 10, 20, 30, 40. So that was 40 cents that jump. So I'm just going to continue with my dollar signs here. So $0. And 40 cents that was our first jump and now I can do a jump from three dollars to five dollars I can do a jump of one dollar which would be four and then I can finish my jump with another dollar so that was a two dollar jump okay so now if I look at these values of our number line and counting on, this represents, in the green circles, the change that Adam gets back. So how much in total should Adam receive? That's right. Adam should be getting back as change $2.40. Okay, Adam should be getting back $2.40. And 40 cents. Now I want to show you uh, the subtraction stack and subtract way. If we were to stack and subtract, we would take how much Adam has in order to find our missing number, and we would subtract how much Adam is paying, which is two dollars and sixty cents. And we would subtract this way. Okay, so I would look at my zeros on top and 
there's a zero underneath, so that would stay a zero. But in this case, I have zero on top and I can't take away a larger number, so I would need to borrow from the five. I'm gonna cross that out. I'm gonna leave four dollars there. And instead of having zero here, I'm gonna add 10. I'm gonna trade and make 10 dimes here. So just the same as we always have subtracted before. And now I can subtract this way. I can do 10 take away six, which is four. Always put my decimal down, continue to follow. The decimal always stays. And four take away two is two. Right. So in this case, Adam would get back $2.40, which is what you see here. So we have a match, we have accuracy. Okay, so that is how we can use subtraction to find the change that you would receive back from a purchase if you paid more than what the actual item costs. Now, I want to just challenge you one step further with this problem. Because if I am a cashier, the person that uh, is taking your money in the store, and I have to give you change, I'm going to do so with the least amount of coins. Okay? So in this case here, I'd, I don't want to receive as a customer, I don't want a pile of nickels, I don't want a pile of dimes, I want the smallest amount of coins in my pocket because it's going to be the lightest and it's going to be the lowest number of coins that I get back and I don't want to have a big pile in my pocket of coins. So we're going to take $2.40 and we're going to see what is the lowest number of coins that Adam would get back, the least amount of coins. So we always start first with our largest coin, okay, which is the toonie. That's right. Some people were, were mixing up the toonies and the loonies. So I would definitely get back a toonie. And I'm just going to keep a running total here as I go along. So I'm definitely going to get back a toonie. So there's the $2. Some of us think it's $1. That is the $2. Oops, that's supposed to be a zero. Pen's sticking again today. And I would get back a quarter. Okay, so that, that's two coins down. And a quarter we know is worth 25 cents. So zero dollars and 25 cents. All right, so one toonie, one quarter. Now I'm at two dollars and 25 cents. Can I do another quarter? I cannot because that would be two dollars and 50 cents. Can I do a dime? I can do a dime. So in this case, I'm going to do the dime next because I want to make sure that I use the coins that have the greatest value and work my way to the smaller coins. I don't want to give away too many coins. I want to make it as easy as possible for the customer. So one dime is going to be 10 cents. And my running total now is $2, $2.25, $2.35. Could I do another dime? I cannot, so it must be a nickel. And a nickel we know is five cents. Oops, no decimal there, there we go. Zero, remember we gotta have that place, zero, five. And there's a reason, boys and girls, why I lined this all up, because it's always your advantage if you check for accuracy and not just assume that you are correct. So if I add these up now, I'm always going to start again in the in the farthest right column here. Okay, so uh, zero plus five is five, zero and five, so that's ten. I can regroup. Once I get to ten, I can regroup. And that's one, two, three, four. Remember, decimals just come down as a decimal, keeps the place of the cents and the dollars. And on this side, I have $2. So I've given out the correct amount of change, and I've only used four coins. So four coins would be the least number of coins that Adam would get back.